Good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And welcome today. Today you're joined by me, Daniel. And also today we've got in Rachel Walpole. Yeah. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, yeah, here's her art station. Um, you guys can go check that out. The link in the description as normal to most of your art sites um and last time i had a guest in i didn't put all the all the links in i usually put like all the links down there you know instagram all that stuff i forgot and then i had to re-edit it but it's there <laughs> um so do try it's it's there um there's so ko.outstation.com uh yeah awesome um, today on my stream, I'm painting a 90 minute art challenge. Um, yeah. So, yeah, tell me a bit about yourself. Oh, it's not much to tell, to be honest. I mean, ba I'm basically just all art and gaming. Awesome. I have a little bit of an obsession with dragons and angels, although uh, <laughs> I've not drawn many in a while. I've been focusing on characters and environments. Mm. The concept art. Awesome. Um, so do you work independently or? I'm currently working freelance. Awesome. I was pushing for uh, studio jobs last year, but then uh, unfortunately uh, COVID happened. So yeah. it's yeah. not gone on since, but yeah, I'm working freelance at the moment. Awesome. Yeah, well, uh, one thing I've seen is I've looked on ArtStation the art station jobs um and because i haven't applied for like a, lo a long time um just kind of focusing on my youtube channel and just painting and doing things um and i just recently like i think last week i looked at art station jobs just in in general to see you know what's out there and uh see if there's anything worth applying for and the amount of work from home jobs i saw was significantly way more than i remember seeing you know back in probably half a year ago a year ago the work from home jobs there was probably maybe 12 13 jobs if that and now mm. it's just like pages pages of work from home jobs that people can do so i think that's because maybe the pandemic um a lot of companies are you know hiring from home um because they can't get them in studio a lot more things like that <laughs> yeah i i imagine a lot of the studios are either closed or just not working from you know their in-house buildings mm. but i've i've been working freelance for a while in any case so i'm kind of used to it I don't, I don't mind too much yeah how, how do you like it do you enjoy it <laughs> How do I like freelance? Yeah. Oof. It it has its ups and downs. Um, I like it because obviously I'm working from home. I have the freedom of being able to plan when I work. And mm. it's it's more of like following my own schedule rather than having to go into a studio from nine to five. Yeah. Yeah. But the downsides are that because I am working from home, I get I get distracted a lot, you know, like anyone would do. I have I have my PC, I have my, my books, my animals, my family, you know. Mm. So instead of having a hard nine to five where you are just tasked to do, you know, one or two things for however many hours, I do end up taking a lot of breaks sometimes. Yeah. Or getting distracted with someone streaming mm -hmm. or, you know, a game or something, an update that's come out. It's very difficult to stay on track sometimes. And especially with the COVID as well, it's a bit difficult to uh, focus on work specifically. But I, I think it's I think it's worth it. There's also the um, like I I would like a schedule, a proper schedule. I've always been uh, a little bit lacking in terms of doing something at a specific time. I do all my work on time, but mm -hmm. you know it's not like you're tasked to work from a certain time doing freelance. Yeah, it is. It is fun though. I I do enjoy it. That's awesome. Well, yeah, it can mm. be you know challenging having a schedule 
um, as well, you know, um, especially yeah, if you're working from home, because sometimes it's a little spontaneous, you know, sometimes you don't feel like painting, um, or like you say, you get distracted, or there's other things on the go as well that you want to do, so you get those things out of the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, you know, um, making sure that you get the tasks that you need to do done um, Mm -hmm. is very important. And, you know, I maintain my schedule as best as I can. I, for me, I work, I work, so I have to do a, a general nine to five job. Um, I get home, I've got um, a little family here to, to take care of, then about 7.30, 8 o'clock, then I'm on my computer from then for about mm. two-ish hours. Um, and that involves me working on some of these videos or painting, um, and also in that time, um, gaming as well, you know, <laughs> so. Yeah, got, got um, to have some downtime. Yeah. And that's challenging, especially if I only have two hours a day, um, I really got to plan whether or not I'm going to play a game or, um, you know, how that will, will work out and things like that. Mm. You know, some nights I find myself just kind of opening Photoshop and then gaming most of the night. <laughs> so, but <laughs> yeah, I think I think we all get those days. <laughs> but then you know it folds up on itself where I'm just like painting, painting, painting um, for days on end, about for a week where I don't touch a game, and then you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, of... I, I kind of, I find myself like that a lot, especially if uh, it's a new game and there are multiple updates coming out all the time. It's reeling you back in. Mm. But I do always find that I do my art on time, my personal projects as well. I often tried to fit those in in the, the beginning of the day. Mm. Although yeah. it, it depends on what I'm I'm doing, because I, I haven't done much personal stuff lately because I've been taking on more uh, client work than usual obviously because of the uh, environmental situation we have. Hmm. So uh, a lot of my personal stuff gets left to the end of the day now. Ah. Do you do quite a bit of personal stuff? or? Um, I can do sometimes. I find I have... Um, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it. I have months of doing mostly just personal stuff and then I calm down a bit for client work and then I kind of get back into it again. I see, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it also depends on the project as well because I have I always have multiple projects going. Hmm. And one of those is my uh, personal story, The Valley of the Gods, which I do a lot of world building for, a lot of concept art, story writing, comics, etc. Awesome. So it really depends on what I feel like doing, what I need to improve on. Etc. Etc. If it's related to client work as well, because if it's something I need to practice, if I'm not used to drawing something, such as vehicles, for instance, then I I'd, I'd use that time to study as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's always good to um, you know, study things that you're doing. You know, I do that um every now and again. I've taken some like schoolism classes, and I was I took um. Daniel Ariaga's course on character design. Oh. Um, and you know, I didn't at the, I didn't have a lot of time. I had a bit of time to to kind of watch it and do some of the kind of tasks. Um, but most of the things he was talking about and the the um tips and things that he taught us, I was applying to the book I was writing at the time, the characters that I was making at the time, um, and I'm still, you know, taking those key um, elements that he, he talks about and using them in these paintings that I'm doing um, as I go, you know, mm. which is awesome. You know, you got to, you know, you got to kind of learn something, but, you know, use it as well in your client work and your personal works and things like that. It's always um, 
and it's great when they do correlate, you know, at the time I did, you know, um, I was just finishing off, I think, a Bobby Chio, um, I think it was, I think, it, no, I think I did Creature Design before that, I was finished off Creature Design, um, I wasn't sure where I was going to go, whether I was going to go, like, how to paint with, like, colour or something like that, um, but it was good that it all correlated there. I was doing characters at the time, um, and I was doing a course on character design. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> I've not done many courses. I've always uh, learned from books. Yeah, awesome. I well, think, yeah. I think. Uh, oh, sorry. No, keep going. I was just going to say that, um, because I've been drawing for quite a while now, I've probably been... I started seriously probably about maybe 13 years ago, 12 years ago. And as I was growing up, there weren't those kind of courses available, at yeah. least not readily available. So I took all my knowledge from books, mm -hmm. the the one course I had in university. Awesome. What, what books do you have? Oh, my God. I have like, <laughs> a, I have like 40 or 50 of them. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. any, anything from anatomy to creatures to gesture, perspective. Um, Wow. Composition, yeah. writing, sequential comic art. Oh my god, you name it, I have it. <laughs> awesome. I've done a lot of study. Yeah, that that is awesome <laughs> to have a collection like that. Um, mm. Yeah, I got I got some books. Um, mm. I think one important one for me was oh, I forget his name. Does character? Uh, uh, he's really good at drawing humans. Uh, what's his name? I know, I know too many artists. That uh, are too good at Loomis, <laughs> Loomis. Oh, Loomis! Yeah, yeah, I have, yes. I have the, uh, yeah, I have um, the book. It, this book was it was kind of given to my sister actually, originally, um, from one of my sister's side of the family. I don't, um, I don't know where fully she fits in, but she was really um, good at art. Uh, she painted some really cool mules and, and um really cool animals and you know at the time my sister was more into art and that kind of thing and, and actually drawing um i was kind of vaguely into it but she got given this book um illustration from andrew loomis um but she eventually just kind of lost that interest and eventually I found the book and it got into to reading that book and, and drawing from it and it was a really good book so um mm, yeah definitely and then you know later on I got given the um art of avatar book um okay which is it's quite smallish um you know it's probably maybe 30 40 pages of that um but it was in depth enough it had some interesting creatures i mean that was a movie um that i went to saw and i was just blown away by like the dragons you know um mm. after seeing the movie i was sitting at the bus stop just really eager to draw heaps of dragons um so you know that was good to to get as well um it's one of my favorite movies actually <laughs> avatar oh it's awesome. so good yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a great movie. Some people, you know, some people just like it and things like that. But I think um, it's good. Um, I think at the time it was all like, oh, this is the most amazing graphics you'll ever see, <laughs> um, kind of a thing. But yeah, it was good. Yeah, <laughs> it still stands out though because it's also three hours long. Yeah, and it, the entire thing in CGI with the it's, it's fantastic. The design as well of everything, the plants and the animals is so good. Yeah, it it's yeah it's really awesome. Um, and yeah, it's a bit long. Um, but yeah, some people don't like those long movies, you know. Um, but I don't mind them, you know, like Star Wars and um, what's another. Some of the long ones. Um, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Lord all of, of the Rings. <laughs> um, which I haven't seen all the Lord of the Rings. I've seen kind of the original, some of the original ones. 
Um, but yeah, one day I want to see all of them. They're, they're so good as well. I And I also really love the long movies because it helps you get immersed more. Hmm. I need to I need to rewatch the uh, the Hobbits ones as well because I think I've only seen the I've seen the first one at least six times, and the second oh, one I've watched a couple <laughs> times, and I've not seen the third one, so I need to I need to get on that. Oh jeez, yeah. Also amazing movies too. All of the Lord of the Rings are. Hmm. Yeah, they're great. They're great work. Um, and I got to see some of the props in um movie art and things like that um, oh really yeah because they at weta workshops they oh. have like yeah um in wellington here in oh. new zealand um oh, i'm jealous yeah they they actually have like this um what they do they have tours sometimes where some people go and see like all their prop making stuff and their prop making kit um we were at design school at the time, and we had a, a a trip to Wellington where we got to go see, yeah, all the props and stuff for the the movies. Um, there were uh, quite a few different movies that they talked about, um, including the work of Ghost in the Shell, um, and I think they even went. Poss- is it? The Lion King they they worked on? No. Planet of the Apes. Um Oh. Yes, they did Planet of the Apes as far as I know. Question mark on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not sure. <laughs> and um I know I'm pretty sure they did the the monkey from the Lion King. No. The monkey from uh what's Jungle Book. Um, I'm pretty sure they did oh, that I one. Did, didn't know his name. <laughs> that, that big orangutan-looking guy. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name any, but I think he won like an Oscar or something. I can't, I can't oh wow! Remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm for, not surprised. For you know his work in it, um, which was really cool. Yeah, and then we did Timano as well, uh, which is a just like a museum. And um, I've been there a few times. They have once I went. I went with my parents once, um, and they had a DreamWorks um, display, which was really awesome because my parents were like totally confused about the kind of work I wanted to do. Um, they don't fully um, understand it, or b- before then. And now, you know, seeing all that stuff, um, they had, you know, concept art pieces, they had 3D sculptures of the characters, they had um, all sorts of uh, really cool work on how they they make their DreamWorks movies. And them mm. seeing that was like, oh, okay, you want to do this kind of thing, and, you know, um, yeah, so that was cool to see too. <laughs> I think uh, some of the older generation don't understand the importance of art in the industry, especially beca- uh, because a lot of uh, the older people came from more physical-based jobs, not you know, yeah. not the media and the entertainment industry where movies and games and you know art is so prevalent now. Hmm. Yeah, I have I... a I had a bit of a the same trouble with my parents as well. Hmm. There were my mum's more understanding these days. <laughs> Yeah, my mum was always more supportive of it than my dad, um, but, you know, eventually he slowly, you know, um, gone to knowing what I was doing and what I wanted to do and things like that um, a little more. Starting to and understand it. Now he's doing, you know, he, he does these, like, beat art things. Um, where, you know, you, you make these, um, I would say fan art, but you make, um, <laughs> these bead art things, you know, if you follow the, the pattern and you make the, these bead art things and he's done quite a few like Mickey Mouse and, um, 
it's really cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. Oh, that's nice, though. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Mm. But it, it's nice that he's more understanding, though, because I know it helps a lot to have that kind of support mm. from your family for something that is so difficult as well. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not only you have to spend so many years getting good at the craft, but you also know how you have to know how to work it in the industry too, and it's so competitive. Yeah. Well, it, me and my mum, because my mum knits, um, so you know, we'd always kind of have like coffee break together. So she'll do oh. she'll do like knitting, um, and then you know I would go out of my room and have make my coffee as well, and then we'll go back and <laughs> to our painting, oh. and then we'll you know talk about have the a day. nice chill art <laughs> session. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> So, yeah, I'd be doing my painting and everything and should be doing her knitting or going to her, her room or whatever, doing her knitting. And then, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that is nice. I remember the, I, I miss, speaking of pre-COVID times, I do miss the um, hanging out with friends and drawing in cafes and such, the, mm. at the library or whatever. Yeah. I do miss that. Well, I didn't have that as much. Um you know, most of my friends don't draw. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but I mean, these these guys online are, are awesome. Um, and every now and again, I might do something where you know, with uh, Magma Studio, um, you can paint with others all over the world. Um, oh, which is really awesome to do. So every now and again, I'll do that, or you know, I used to. Go and do this. I can't remember what it's called, but you'd basically have to draw th something within five minutes. It's like an online game thing. I'd do that every now and again, and just draw with like these random people from around the world, and they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, you know how to draw?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always surprising when that happens. I've never done that before, but uh, that sounds like it would be really fun, especially to surprise them too. Like, oh my god, you're good at art. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I did, you know, I did try when I was in school of design. I set up a, a drawing group, which we did like I think it was like every Tuesday or something. Um, it lasted a little while where I was just showing them, you know, how to draw certain things. Um, I showed a, a shape technique where you um create things from certain shapes, so a circle, you create a, a character or something from a circle, create a character from a triangle, mm. create something from a square. Um, and then, you know, after at some point, I saw one of the guy's designs, who was a level below me, and he used that technique, the, using a triangle, circle, square, to create some of his characters on his poster, and he thanked me for that. Um, Aww. So, and it, every now and again, would go and just draw and um, doodle, just meet up and have fun talking about drawing or just drawing, you know, um, chillaxing. And it was cool to do that. <laughs> I often draw um, random characters or or creatures from shapes. It, it doesn't limit you. And I find that the wackier the shape, the more interesting <laughs> the design comes out as well. I use the same technique on um, like shells, for instance. You have loads of different types of seashells, and there are some really stunning ones, some really spiky ones. I've I've taken so many design inspirations from shells, and they they come out different every single time. Mm. And I always recommend to people uh, if you're stuck on an idea or a silhouette or a design or something, just take some random natural shape. That, you know, the, the wackier the better. Hmm. And it, it always works. It always helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it just it just gives someone a starting point, you know. Um, yeah. That they can go from here. That instead instead of staring at like at a blank canvas, it's the worst. You have something there. Starting off. You know, you have something. <laughs> yeah. A triangle is like, oh damn it! I've already drawn a triangle on it. I've got to turn this triangle into something, or, or mm -hmm. make it look good, or you know. Um, so it gives you, gets you out of that kind of thing where, um, you're staring at a blank canvas. 
I, th- I think no matter how good you are or how long you've been drawing, that blank canvas is still the scariest <laughs> thing that any artist will will be fearful of. I I still get stuck on blank canvases sometimes, and I've drawn thousands upon thousands of drawings. Mm. And knowing where to start is always the hard bit. Once once you get into it, it's fine from there. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm a little bit the opposite, a little bit, because I have so many ideas I want to do, so many things I want to draw. Um, yeah, I can just pick and choose what I want to draw. <laughs> and, oh, I have lot. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I've got lots of ideas. I think mm. I'm plagued with having too many ideas that I mm. then kind of overthink things and just don't get anything done. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, it can be challenging, you know, um, with the blank canvas thing. Um, for, for me, I kind of got to train because I went to design school. Um, and there, you know, we had to deal with that whole process of, um, you know, creating an idea, then moving the idea from... A good idea to a, a kind of a concept, um, picking a few concepts, playing around, and then deciding, you know, the final um, route, you know. Mm. And then also, yeah. you know, sometimes along the way we learned also if that route went wrong, you know, how we can go from, you know, a really bad <laughs> design to fixing it up and, and things like that which you know it, it took a long time you know from um a lot of a lot of kind of group meetings and um critiquing and and you know just playing around and things like that but we did learn a lot from that process that yeah <laughs> yeah and i think over time uh, as you develop new skills and you experience how other people have have tackled it as well it it gets better naturally like i find when uh aside from the shapes thing when i when i warm up for a drawing or a painting or something i'll always sketch random gestures or thumbnail compositions is a good one for environments i'll always try and push my uh environmental comps all the time and i find that also helps a lot because the more you do the more ideas you get and then it's like well you kind of on a roll now so i'm like i'm not gonna stop Mm. Yeah, it's been challenging for me with backgrounds and things because I, I started off with just dealing with the character and that was, you know, was happy doing. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that's how a lot of people start out. Mm. I was um, in my uh, games concept design course that I did in university a few years back. They they always reminded me oh, you've you've got to plan the the environment first because the environment is. Even if the character is the focus, the environment is so important to making the character feel grounded and believable and realistic that it's always important to plan it first. Because no matter how perfect the character is, if the background is really wonky or, Mm. you know, it's off perspective or it's too bright or, you know, any of that, the character's not going to look right regardless. Mm. Exactly. I suppose it depends on the, the, the the, the end goal as well. Yeah, yeah. Because maybe you want a, you know, a, a not as good background to kind of complement the character. Yeah, always for you know, if you're just designing the character. Um, yeah. You don't really. You don't necessarily need to see the background, I guess. Um, it does. It's like you say, it does help. It does add your character. Um, yeah, it, <clears throat> it is very important. Um, Especially yeah, for illustration, um, mm-hmm. any kind of artwork, if you're into making um, art for books or comics, you know, that kind of thing, it's, it's vitally important because it's another story element. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> at, the, at the start, I just wanted to you know, design characters and, and draw just animals, really. Um, but now that I've gone into it a bit further, doing the, the backgrounds, um, 
as well it, it's it's helpful and it does add that um extra element and i do enjoy it too now a little bit more um placing the characters in the environment where they are um and getting to tell my stories the way i want them um so learning backgrounds but i'm always challenged with it because you know i haven't kind of delved fully into drawing backgrounds um i just get better over time Mm-hmm. kind of a thing so yeah i find that the more you do something you're you're bad at or you know is your weakness at least in my case the more i've done something i'm bad at the the more fun it's become mm. like as i've gotten better it just it just kind of gets even more fun because then you're like oh well you know it's this time to look really good now and to pair it with my other strengths Improving a skill in one area kind of helps all the other areas, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Especially if it's something like with a an environment where you're practicing color and lighting and perspective and composition. It, it kind of all aids everything else too. So it improves your lighting on characters. It improves the perspective, your composition. So I, f I find there's nothing wrong with learning something new because it helps all your other skills anyway. Exactly. That's what I keep saying, you know, like um every new skill you know is helpful um and yeah. it adds to something else you know if you're doing creature design and you start off doing uh human anatomy it helps in the end because maybe you want to do a humanoid character um or just learning from drawing you know human anatomy and things like that you learn a little bit more about perspective that way or proportions that you can take and apply to your creatures and animals that does really help um, and vice versa if you're really into drawing humans or you're really into drawing landscapes yeah drawing characters and then people can be very helpful for that too um, you know it all plays a part <laughs> Anatomy is really good too, because it, mm. it's a really transferable skill. Yep. If you love drawing humans and creatures, and if you're like the type of person who loves creating things from imagination, knowing the best, like the, you know, the two of each worlds is, is kind of the recipe for success. Because if you know um, animal anatomy and human anatomy, you can just mash them together to create something new. <laughs> I find that's that's helped me in a, more than a few cases of creature design. Mm. Like, there's so much freedom in in the knowledge of anatomy, especially. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just made designing so much more fun. <laughs> exactly. It it makes things more believable. Um, you know, um, for me, I'm doing weekly tips every week. Um, where it just kind of, at the moment, I've been drawing animals and just being um you know, delving into um, how I draw them in different angles and then I go from the different angles to drawing um, something more dynamic, more interesting, mm -hmm. how, I, how I do that, you know. Um, and that's been very helpful going through different animals um, and things like that because not only do I get a little bit of knowledge from drawing them and understanding them a little bit more, um, but I share it with a lot of other people too, so, you know, it's great to, to do. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and I can apply it to some other animals, you know, um, because, you know, different animals, some animals are similar, um, similar kind of head and body shapes. Most, you know, most animals do have a kind of, they all drive from a similar structure. It's just, you know all broken down and, and different um you know that makes sense yeah i, I get it because um and like in the case of human and an uh, animal anatomy there are a lot of similar similarities mm. so i think it's it's fine to take from each one and learning one makes you automatically better at another anyway as long as you know like specific joints you know that kind of thing yeah and as, as as long as it's something remote, like you know, similar to a human, not not comparing to like a centipede or something. Mm. 
but I, I do agree with that. I found I found that's the that's been the case with me as well. Yeah. And same same with going for something completely different, like you know, three D design. I've trialed a bit of three D design. It is, um, you know, it is helpful. I've seen. Uh, I watched this video. Lately, of a tube stream. Uh, where this guy used 3D design in his work, um, which was really cool, and I've seen some people do it where they they create the characters in 3D or, or a a basic form in 3D, and then they go in and paint it from there. And it, it it gives you a good starting point. Um, it's like yeah, doing that shape exercise where you draw the triangles, but you're doing it in 3D. You draw in the, the general shapes and everything, and then you go and paint over top of it using those shapes. Um, which yeah. is, it's on my to-do list, I think, one day, is where I just grab a, a 3D model that I make or something and then paint completely over it. Um, it's on my bucket list. I, I have had a lot of experience with 3D, and um, I do use it in a lot of my work as well. It's very common in the entertainment industry to use 3D as a base. Not not just to make things easier or to give you a starting point, but it makes things faster too. Because if especially if you are using um, the same asset or something, redoing the lighting or the colors or the textures is far easier than painting something from scratch. Mm. And it also gives you a more accurate representation of real life, especially if you're going for something more realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a, I've, I've sculpted a lot and I've modelled a lot for my paintings too, and it does, it helps a lot. It's also just fun. <laughs> Be, being able to model, it's, it's a new outlet for art, and it's learning yeah. something really complicated and new. And it's just, it's it's revitalising almost, it's refreshing, you know? It's not just using a pencil all the time or a pen. It's something different that you can all incorporate. It's like a game, you know? It's something you need to play with. It's just something else to add to your arsenal as well, and it does make mm. things easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I trialed this. Uh, so I'm doing a 90 minute art challenge that you guys are seeing. Um, and I've done it three, this is my third time around. Fourth, fourth time around, I think. Um, of doing 90 minute art challenges, which is interesting. I think this year, what well, I'm making it that I do a little bit more of them um, instead of doing. Because last year I did a few drawing animal live streams where I just kind of draw animals for an hour or something. Um, about 45 minutes. But yeah, I decided to do these 9 minute art challenge because I wanted to do one at some point. I was like, I want to do one of these 9 minute art challenge. If only I had the time. Um, so I just made the time. I was like, now I'll do it for one of the streams. I do a 90 minute art challenge. And this is a... So draw it in your style, which is another thing I haven't done before. You know, drawing something in your style, kind of a thing. Have you done one of those before? Uh, I've done a few, not in a while though. I've yeah. I've done a few of the Instagram draw this in your style ones, and they oh, they yeah. are fun. I, yeah. I I do actually really <laughs> like them. Seeing seeing how different it can be. Yeah, I wasn't sure about it because I was like I. You know, I don't um, really know my style, I guess. <laughs> um, but I just went with it. I just painted it. I just painted it how the how I paint it. You know, um, mm. I'm not one to be like this. Is my style, this is the way it has to be. I just kind of paint it the way I, I paint it, um, and that's my style. <laughs> yeah. So you know, um, hopefully, you know, I. I guess I got it right. <laughs> it's really um, cute. I do like it. Thank you. Um, but, you know, I guess there's no one to, to be there to be like, this isn't your style. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it... It doesn't really matter, though, does it? You know, if, you, if you're having fun and you're learning... Yeah, yeah. That's really what matters. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the most important thing to me is, you know, you're improving, um, you know, you're moving forward, you keep learning and you keep cr creating... Um, great stuff as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yes, I saw that you were in FX Magazine. Oh, I was, yeah. Oh, when was that? I don't even remember when that was. Oh, I don't Last year? Oh, yeah, yeah. Last yeah. year. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. I've never been in a magazine before. But it's, it's so weird seeing your own art in a magazine. <laughs> yeah. I could quite get over it. Mm. But I'm very happy with it, though. Awesome. Well, that's cool. Um, how'd that work out? You just did they contact you or? No, I um I contacted them. My friend was like, um, have you ever tried just contacting FX Magazine to be in the magazine? I was like, no. Is that <laughs> is that even a thing? Can you apply to be in the magazine? So I sent I sent an email off and I was like, hi. Um, one of my friends told me that uh, I could apply to be in your magazine, and she was like, yeah, send us some images. I was like, okay, and then that was just it. Awesome. It, the process was so fast, and I, I didn't expect yeah. it. But then, because the uh, the applications were like a few months ahead of print, I kind yeah. of forgot about it, and then it came out again, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I've been in one here in New Zealand. We've got the Art of New Zealand magazine. Um, oh. So I was in that one. I just, I did the same thing. I just, you know, messaged him being like, oh, hey, could I, you know, maybe be in your magazine? Um, and they asked for me to do like a, a drawing tutorial thing. Um, so I I spent a few weeks kind of setting that up or a few days. I can't remember how long it was. Um, probably about a week setting up their painting thing. At the time I was doing this drawing, I was like, okay, well, I'll take photos of this drawing and, and talk about the process. So that's what I did. Ended up in the magazine, so that was pretty cool. Um, wow, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, but it's, it's great to do. And, um, it's another form of media. It, it, it's great to see, you know, because I used to, I used to get FX Magazine, um... I first got it when I was probably 13, 14 as a gift. Um, then, and then, you know, it came with like a CD disc sometimes. Some of the versions came with like a CD disc. Um, with, on it, you know, tutorials on how to paint and things like that, which was really cool. Um, but I just loved to, to see all the work through it, flick through it, and then eventually, um, I found the magazine again, and I started slowly buying it every month, um, and then eventually I just stopped because, you know, it's not exactly cheap. <laughs> <It's> so, yeah, <laughs> and there's so many, because a new one comes out every month. Yeah, yeah, so I got a decent stack of them, so every now and again, um, I will look at, go and look at those artwork, those artists, um, some of them... I think I've looked through and actually contacted them and have been part of this um, channel as well, which has been awesome. Um, mm. And, yeah, it's just great to, to see a lot of different artwork that's out there. I think these days um, a lot of where I view art is on ArtStation. Yeah, yeah. Cause the, the variety and the amount of artists on there is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I just like constantly refreshing the page and mm. seeing all the cool art, and then I have folders and folders of hundreds of images that I like to visit every now and again. I get so distracted mm. with all this cool art. Yeah, there's there's so many cool artists on there. I've contacted so many from Art Station itself. Um, you know, I used to go through DeviantArt. Um, yeah, I think three four years ago. Um, and there's still quite a few artists on DeviantArt as well. Um, yeah. But that has a kind of a badish reputation for a lot of this furry art and um, yeah, a little bit more on the not safe for work side kind of things there too. Um, well, I suppose it's called DeviantArt <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> Um, but it does have some, some really cool artists, um, 
on there. And one that I found was Teal Shin. Um, and, you know, eventually he did a Twitch channel, which uh, that's the kind of reason I got into Twitch as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, he was an awesome artist on there. And he, did, he did more, a lot more fan arty kind of stuff, but it was awesome. Um, and every now and again, he'll do a little bit more kind of personal ish work um, as well. Yeah. Um, I started out on DeviantArt. Awesome. Many, many years ago. <laughs> Yeah. It was all right. It was all right, I think, when it first started. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> then when all the professionals moved to, like, ArtStation and, you know, Twitch and Twitter and all that, it... yeah. So it's very interesting, to say the least. Yeah. I think it's, for ArtStation, it's, like, easier because you have all the jobs kind of there. Yeah. And, um, you know... And you have, and you, yeah, well. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say that uh, since the new update of DeviantArt, it's far easier to navigate ArtStation. Mm. Like, the new DeviantArt layout is uh, pretty terrible, in my opinion. Yeah. The update, I'm not a big fan of. I was like, what is this? Um... <laughs> it's it's so difficult to <laughs> get. It. Like, I, I don't yeah. like it. It it took me probably a couple of days to get used to it, and I do use DeviantArt. I have like this little group where I share um, other people's artwork on there, and I I do like monthly journals and things like that. Um, mm. But I'm not very very active on it. I just kind of go on that group and see artwork that's out there sometimes. Um, yeah, it's the same with me. But. Yeah, art session is awesome too. I really like flicking through other people's artwork on there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Any any last words? Um. Well, I wish you the best of luck on your journey, and I, I hope you always continue to enjoy it as well. It it does get difficult at a certain point, especially when it um you have to cater more to. If you're not self-employed and you have to cater more to what other people want, it can get quite tough. Mm. But I, I wish you the best of luck with your art. Thank you. Yeah, and you too. And yeah. I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. It was nice talking to you. Yeah, it was great. Um, Yeah, thanks everyone for joining me. Uh, whether you joined me, or joined us on Twitch or YouTube, um, you can check out Rachel's work on nisokyle.artstation.com um yeah thanks for joining me as well um keep drawing everyone keep creating and see you in the next video goodbye